Good evening. I'm going to ask this time if you desire a special prayer. I'm going to ask you to form a line down the center aisle. And also kindly put your phones on a silent mode. And let's get our hearts right. And let's have an attitude of prayer, okay? I heard too much talking as I came in. We need to pray. It's the time to pray. God bless you.
Good evening, everyone. Everybody happy? Let's thank God we're alive one more day, shall we not? We're so happy that you're here, and uh, maybe we can get somebody to come and remove this pulpit. We don't need it up here at the beginning. Uh, thank you. Um, we're going to have a great night, aren't we? They're going to put the lights up here, and the choir's coming out, and Sue Petrie is going to come and lead us in praise and worship. But let's just pray before we begin, okay? Father God, we thank you that we're alive today. Every day is a gift. May help us to make the most of this day. Tomorrow we're not sure of. Yesterday we can't change. But today, Tuesday, is our day to receive from you, to help someone along the way. Bless this meeting and make it a blessing to the people. Let the people leave, not talking about a church or a man or a guest, but let them talk about how good you are, Lord, as you leave this, as we leave this building. We pray this all in the name of Christ, our Savior, and everyone said, Amen. Let's all stand. Put your hands together and welcome the choir and Sue. Praise the Lord. Welcome, everyone.
praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You know, with everything going on around us, I am so thankful that I know the Lord today. I am so thankful that I have a hope that is not rooted in this world. My hope is not in this world. My hope is in something eternal. And my eyes are fixed on that right now. Amen. Is that where your eyes are fixed? There's nothing to see here. Only things to pray for. To lift up to the Lord and ask Him to intervene. But our eyes are not on the things of this world. Our eyes are on Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never change. He is our hope, and He is faithful. Amen? He is a good God. I'm so thankful that I know Him today. Aren't you thankful that you know Him? Thankful. We're a thankful God. We believe in you today, Lord. We believe our belief is in you, God. And the only thing, God that will not change, that is steadfast, that is true, that is deeply rooted, and you will not be shaken, God. We put our trust in you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing this song together. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one,
our trust in, the one who has saved us, the one who has redeemed us. We believe in you tonight, Lord. Our faith is in you, God. Where else can we go? Where else can we turn but to you, God? You are our hope today, Lord. And we thank you today that you are a God of mercy. You are a God of grace. You are a God of love. And you are a God of truth. We thank you, Jesus, that your eyes are towards us tonight, God. That you are not far off, Lord, but you are with us, Lord. You are concerned about what concerns us, God. You are concerned about the affairs of our world, Lord Jesus. So God, we lift up our world to you right now, God, and we ask for mercy, God. Mercy, God, mercy, God. Mercy, Lord. Jesus, your name is the Prince of Peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Come and bring your peace, Lord. Come and reveal yourself to this world, God, that you truly are an answer, Lord that you are truth, God. You are the way. You are the life, Lord. And there is peace in your name, God. There is love in your name, God. There is hope in your name, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise tonight, God. We bless your name, God. We worship and adore you tonight, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. There is no one like you, God. You are high and lifted up, Jesus. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Even as this song says, you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. You will have the final word. You will have the final say, God. And you do all things well, Lord. Our trust is in you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing. Let's worship with all our hearts as we sing this. You
that we're going to sing that one more time your alpha and omega uh i'm impressed in my heart over there as we're singing when you're on the mountain and things are working out you have more than enough money to pay the bills you just got a promotion it's a little easier to praise the lord am i right ah but when you're in the valley when there's financial pressure when you just got lost your job or you're needing a job tonight or your money is this high but your bills are this high god hasn't changed he's still worthy to be praised but a lot of us we're good at praising god when it looks great and then when things go sideways we're complaining and bitter and oh whatever and i just wonder if you're here tonight maybe you want to really make god happy you're in a jam you're jammed up don't have a job or the job doesn't sufficiently meet your needs or just some situation happened and the roof came in and you're really under financial pressure tonight and your family i want you to get up out of your seat just walk here to the front i don't care if two of you come but you're going to sing and praise god in the midst of the problem in the midst of the difficulty you're going to let god know god i don't praise you on the mountain only i praise you 24 7 365 because you are worthy to be praised. So will you make your way here? Come on, let's sing together. From the beginning, you are Alpha and Omega. Everyone. So Father God, help them to have wisdom and energy to apply for the jobs that are needed, open doors that no one can shut. But God, we're not asking for Mercedes, we're asking for our needs to be met. And your word says, my God shall supply all of your needs. We need this, God, these folks need this. We need this, Lord. And that's why they're looking to you, because you said you would supply our needs. So we're going to trust you now. We're not going to worry. 
We're not going to fret. We're not going to have anxiety attacks. We are going to trust in God who never fails. For we pray it in Jesus' name. And everyone said aloud. Come on, let's give a little applause here for the Lord. So we're so happy. Those of you watching online, we're so happy that you're here. This is not our typical Tuesday night prayer meeting where we're usually praying for different needs through the whole service. It's going to take a little different turn, but what we're going to do right now is have 90 seconds of uninterrupted handshaking, hugging. We want you to leave your neighborhood over there where you're sitting and greet people you don't know. Make them feel welcome. Give someone a smile. We begin right now. Do it. church family whether you're joining us in person or online we're so excited to have you with us today here are a few announcements we would love to share with you young adults ages 18 to 29 don't miss this friday's night of worship and the word followed by a fun time of fellowship at sanctus community night the meeting will take place at 7 30 p.m at 190 livingston street We're just a week away from our pastors intensive for pastors, associate pastors, and missionaries along with their spouses. This three-day event from Monday, October 16th to Wednesday, October 18th will include sessions on key leadership issues, participation in our Tuesday night prayer meeting where the participants will be prayed for by our congregation, and a Q&A for our pastor's wives. Please feel free to share this invitation with any pastor or missionary that you feel may benefit from this time of sharing, fellowship, and encouragement. For more information and to register, please visit our website. Our career and business ministry is hosting a virtual workshop on resume writing on Saturday, October 21st at 9.30 a.m. You will learn how to market your job skills and experience with your resume. Visit our website to sign up today. All 30-somethings are invited to spend time studying the Word of God together at the BT30s Ministry four-week small groups beginning on Thursday, October 26th at 7 p.m. at 190 Livingston Street. To register, please visit our website. Calling all teens, you won't want to miss this year's BTYM Youth Retreat in Pennsylvania from Friday, October 27th to Sunday, October 29th. The theme of the retreat is Revive, and it will be a time of fun and fellowship in the beautiful outdoors with lots of activities, including rock climbing and archery. For more information and to register, go to brooklyntabernacle.org. Once again, thank you for joining us today. We pray that this service is a blessing to you. If you would like more information or want to get plugged in, please visit us at brooklyntabernacle.org. God bless. Thank you.
joy in this trouble. I've got peace in the storm. I've got strength in the battle. I don't fear anymore. I'm a child of heaven. My hope is secure. I've got joy because I've got Jesus. Who has Jesus today?
My wife wrote a lot of songs. That's one of my favorite songs. Do you love that song? How many love what it says? He loved me. So before we go on here with the main part, uh, we have to pause, uh, obviously, what's going on in our world. We have a lot of missionaries spread throughout the uh, world. Uh, Pastor Park heads up our missions department. The first couple we ever sent out uh, was a Puerto Rican guy who grew up in Brooklyn and he married a Jewess uh, named Leah and they got a burden for Israel and they went to uh, Israel and uh, thank you Stephen thank you and they went to Israel's missionaries working among the Jewish people there and God opened doors to wor uh, work among Palestinians, Muslims that are there. They're gold. They're beyond gold. They, they risked their lives for Christ. They, he's had, I think, his car stoned twice. And they have a son who, uh, who received a, um, the family was sent a Purim gift, which was a booby trapped and was, had a, a bomb in it. And they were away in Jerusalem and uh, with some guests and the 16 year old, 14 year old son at that time opened it and it, you could hear the blast a mile, two miles away. And uh, he shrapnel, he just, I don't know how many surgeries he had, but God preserved his life. And let's thank God that he's alive. Um, and uh, so Ami is his name. So. Obviously, the moment this happened in Israel, we're concerned because they're right there. So this is from him to our church uh, and also to the pastors. This morning on the news, we see about, this is October 10th, 900 Israelis dead and 2,700 wounded, but it changes by the minute. On Saturday, October 6, 2023, at 6 a.m. Israeli time, which was the Sabbath day of rest, plus a Jewish holiday celebrating the giving of the law of Moses. Thousands of missiles were launched into Israel in a surprise attack that Israeli intelligence had someone, somehow failed to uh, detect. Up to this point, the number is at least 5,000 missiles launched. Together with that, 1,500 terrorists, well-armed, with advanced weapons, including bazookas, infiltrated into Israel, along with hundreds of civilians who took the opportunity to come in to kill and kidnap Israelis as hostages. They entered by bulldozing the security fence, coming in on gliders and by sea. They quickly took over communities and farming communities that are on the Gaza border, and they massacred hundreds of unarmed civilian Israelis in their homes, men, women, children, infants, and the elderly. And today they had it broadcast all of there that a lot of the, some of the children who I found had, had been beheaded, had been had their heads taken off. Um, 100 hostages were taken to Gaza and are being tortured, killed, raped, subjected to horror, using their contacts on their telephones this is evil beyond on steroids. Hamas have sent videos to their loved ones using their phones, showing them being tortured and murdered. After days of hand-to-hand -hand urban combat, from house to house, the communities have been retaken back into Israeli control, but a hun hundreds of bodies of men, women, and children have been found mercilessly massacred. Most of the terrorists who infiltrated have been neutralized but it is suspected that there are still some remaining who are still active and more who are still trying to infiltrate the borders. An emergency unity government for the duration of the war has been formed at this time. A massive air attack has been launched against the Hamas in Gaza, but a land incursion seems imminent. The first wave of 300,000 reserve soldiers have been called up, including my son Ariel, married and the father of three, children, six and under. Another son, Natan, is also waiting for impending orders to go into battle, as it was just announced that another wave of reservists will be called up shortly. All flights have been canceled except for Israeli airlines who are bringing 
uh, many Israelis back who have been residing abroad. They are coming back to serve in the army, including our son Ami, who's a social worker and who has been living in the USA. Ami now is in his late 20s, I would imagine, and he's real tall. He, was, he used to be a basketball player, went back to actually trying to play and um, uh, because of all the injuries, he can't serve, but he's going as a social worker. He was critically injured in a terrorist bomb attack on our house in 2008, so that's 15 years ago. And he's returning to Israel to volunteer with the teams of psychologists and social workers to minister to those who survived the massacres and who are experiencing horrific trauma, almost done. On the other hand, foreign governments are sending their Air Force planes to pick up their citizens whose flights have been canceled and who are stranded here. We were told last night, it would be Monday night, to expect something up ahead that will send all of Israel into the bomb shelters for at least three days. I don't know how accurate that is. He's just writing from what he knows. Israelis are clearing the supermarket shelves bare, uh, the shelves bare buying essentials, but many stores that sell non-essential items are closed for security persons purposes. The Lebanese that's north of Israel, Iranian-backed Hezbollah on the northern border are launching missiles and sending inf infiltrators into Israel. And so a new front has opened up. The border communities in the south and on the northern border were given the order to evacuate their homes to the center of the country because of the fierce battles that seem ahead. The government has ordered hotels to open up to house the evacuees. Charities are supplying them with food, clothing, and essentials. For those running, please pray for those running into bomb shelters 24 seven because of missile attacks, pray for their safety. That the Lord will make us believers, true ambassadors of the message of the gospel and be able to speak hope to the traumatized, mournful and fearful people. Because without Yeshua, there is no assurance of salvation for wisdom for the leaders of this nation to make sober decisions as the war escalates in the midst of this tragedy and death. Pray for those serving in the military. Pray for their divine protection and for the believers in the military. Pray for the hearts of the Israeli people that they would be comforted and turn to God. Pray, we've had several attempts by terrorists to infiltrate our city. Please pray for the safety of our city for when we travel in and out for the protection of Israel and her people. For the tiny community, pray, of believers in Gaza that have been severely persecuted under the Islamic rule of Hamas, that God would use them. For the ex-Muslim believers in our area that David has been meeting with and ministering to. And as uh, my friend Mike said in my office before the meeting, there's going to be death on both sides and the life of uh, a Palestinian is just as precious as the life as an Israeli. So, so war is hell and people die. And this ghastly attack, when you're beheading children, uh, this shows a face of evil that uh, even shocks us who think we're unshockable. So I just, I don't feel like someone should lead to pray. I don't even know how to pray. Just honest, I'm telling you the honest truth. I don't know how to pray. Yes, pray for peace, pray for things to calm down, pray to protect children. I mean children, Palestinian children, Jewish children, any kind of child. Please, just, we need peace. We need peace there. But God has the, uh, we learn from the Bible, God can take disasters and turn them into blessings somehow. I don't know how he does that. I don't know what's needed here. But I just think if we just dim these lights a little bit here and my brother, just play, I need the oh, I need the and Let's just have a minute or so of quiet, quiet prayer in your seats. Would you just as however the Lord directs you, pray, pray for what's going on there in Israel.
Lord, we don't know how to pray. We need your Spirit's help. You said on one hand, in the last times, perilous days would come. There would be wars and rumors of wars before you return. At the same time, God, we especially lift up the lives of the believers that we know. Believers in Gaza. Believers in Israel. People who call upon the name of the Lord. Now we know if they die, they go to be with you. So we thank you for the promise of eternal life. But oh God, protect the children. Please God, just have mercy. Have mercy. There's so much hate in this world. And you're a God of love who is love. So we know where that hate comes from. But we pray that you will protect David and Leah and their children and their grandchildren. Please, God, we lift up our hands right now. Lift up your hand. We lift up our hands representing their families and children and the believers, the Muslim believers, the, the Israeli believers. God, we just pray you'll bring protection over those that serve you and are trying to spread the good news. We ask all this in Jesus' name, in the name of Yeshua. And everyone said, please watch the screen. How delightful I am having a good friend like you. I would like to take this opportunity to thank each one of us for having joined Muli Children Family, the largest family in the world. Many people ask how God has used MCF to impact Africa and expand the reach of Muli Children Family to care for the least of these. We hope and pray that this short video will give you some insight into the work of the Lord through Muli Children's family. Since COVID, many things have happened. The Muli movie has made MCF a center of learning. Many ministries have come from Uganda, uh, Tanzania, West Africa, and all over Africa to learn about the Muli transformation model and how we organically farm and sustainably run our farms. I am from Rwanda. And I come from Zambia. I'm a Zimbabwe who is residing in Zambia. We learned about the Muli model and we were eager to come and find out exactly what it is. The pressure on Muli children's family to continue accepting new children is at an all-time high. None of the marginalized children, even those who have been abused, are left behind. They are all warmly embraced by Muli children's family. Because of inflation, unemployment, and drought, the courts call us daily and the children show up in need. That is why we have 11 locations and over 6,800 children under our care. Through your generosity and God's divine wisdom, MCF has been able to provide the best education available in all of Kenya for each of these children. More than 80 MCF children are now at Kenyan uh, universities, 22 in international universities outside Africa, and 502 are at Muli College. The demand for higher education and vocational training is only increasing day by day. Many projects to improve our capabilities to minister to the women and the children and our care include one Malindi Women's Centre. This centre is a beacon of hope for women who were abused. It houses 63 women and their children and provides spiritual nourishment, trauma 
the project described here are counseling and vocational training. Security wall. The construction of the perimeter security wall ensures that the safety and the well-being of over 1,000 children that live here in Dalani. Girls and the boys dorms in Dalani with the growing needs in the community. We found ourselves in need of new facilities to provide a place for more and more children. These new dorms will ensure that every child has a safe place to play, learn and sleep. Sports center that is nearing completion. Once complete, the MCF Sports Center will be a state of the heart indoor sports facility that will be home to the Muli International Sports Academy where MCF children can train in karate, uh, football, that is American soccer and uh, gymnastics. Pottery operation on sustainability. Our pottery operation is up and running and the first batch of chicks was ordered recently and are in their new environment being provided the utmost care. Greenhouses. The greenhouses are in process of being recovered and we are excited for the harvest next year. Muli Mission Obstro. The Lord has put on my heart the vision to build a state of the heart mission also. Workers are currently finishing the first stage a maternity ward and a trauma unit, which are the greatest needs in this community. I would like once again to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation for having uh, you as my dear brethren brothers and sisters in, in, in Christ, and that you have decided to team up with us, I encourage you to keep up praying for all the projects that we want to achieve, as well as the ongoing uh, project. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. Wow. Talk about one life making a difference. I've introduced a lot of people on this platform. Nothing makes me happy. Put your hands together, everybody. Welcome Dr. Charles Mulley. seated please what a wonderful wonderful evening that we have at this time to fellowship together to sing to the Lord and to listen to the to, to the Lord through his servant I am so delighted to be here tonight because I remember I've been praying for you, and I'm sure you have been also praying for us in Kenya. And the Kenya is one of the countries in Africa that are Christian. The Lord uh, Jesus Christ is worshipped. And we have so many other countries in Africa. We, MCF, Muli Children Family, stands for the poor, stands for those who are sick, for those who are troubled, and those who are lost, 
those who have no hope anywhere. That's where we exist, MCF. And therefore, this is only to glorify God. Amen. Amen. The, what you have seen is a little a part of what we do in Kenya and uh, Africa and other countries as well. Me, I was born in a family where there were no peace. And at the same time, my dad was so addicted to alcohol. And all the time when he came home, he never had, and we never had peace. We had, like myself, being the firstborn, to run underneath the bed because we were living in a small house. And that was all the time that when we had our father coming with my two brothers, we used to hide ourselves. Since there was no peace, poverty was extreme because even my mom could not afford to buy anything. And I remember she used to go to uh, really to beg from our relatives. But uh, you ask for help just once or two or three times. Then the next time, somebody tells you, it is enough. We cannot continue to tolerate you this way. And I, I remember that I wanted to go to school and I was left just like that as my mom, my two brothers, and my father. They left me and I was abandoned. I was nobody's son. I was just going around begging for food. And that one gave me a different kind of life. I was so angry. The anger within me was too much because I asked myself, why did it happen to me? Only me, why? Why not other children? When I went to school, then I could not stay long because there was no school fees. And so things were so bad, but the, what I needed more was peace and the food. That was the most important thing. And therefore, having grown up at the age of 16 years, that kind of life, I thought there was no need of me to live any longer. And then I wanted to commit suicide. I was ready. And then God is so faithful. And God is good. Because we may say God is good without knowing the meaning of goodness. He is and he is faithful. And so, as I was um, standing somewhere, and then um, somebody passed by, and me, I was out of mind. I did not know where to start. And, but I was decided to commit suicide. And this man who came, he saw me, and he talk to me because he, he never knew me and he thought this young man should have some problem. And then he invited me to go with him and we went to a church which was very nearby. And then we went in and I was so welcomed. I was uh, wondering now what am I, have I come to do? I was not a Christian. I had no hope, because when you have no hope, then there's nothing good for your future. 
And therefore, the young people were dancing, like today we were dancing, praise the Lord. They were doing that way. And me, I was just like that. My face looks pale. And uh, I did not really recognize and I know anything good or bad. And during that time now, the preacher spoke about the power of forgiveness. And he continued to say that um, whoever among you here has got some bitterness or somebody wronged you, come here and then I'll pray for you. That was the, the pastor who was speaking. And um, I never moved where I was standing, but I, I, I raised my hand and I said to my heart and to God, be the glory. That time I raised my hand and I said, God, forgive me. One is I was so bitter about my own father because he beat my mother and kicked her when I was, I could see at the age of four, five, six years. And so that bitterness, it grew. And um, that's why I felt I wanted to, 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 to die. And then beside that, extreme poverty. The extreme poverty is that when you lack food, when you lack accommodation, and then you are on your way to the street. That's how it was. So I was prayed for, and uh, since that time, as I was 16 years old, I was happy to know that there is a Jesus, the Son of God, who came all the way from heaven to save us, including myself and even you. Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, I never believed it before. I did not believe anything. But now I came through the message and through the prayer of the pastor. And therefore, when I raised my hand and was prayed for, all this was left behind. But becoming a Christian, it doesn't mean that troubles are over. It is the beginning of the battle. <laughs> and uh, then, because there is only one who is around, not in heaven, and that is the devil. That spirit, evil spirit, try to bring confusion in the mind of the people. And once people get to understand, uh, uh, the devil is powerless. Jesus is power. And uh, I believe that. And therefore, I started the journey going to Nairobi. And uh, I'm sure some of you, you have seen my movie, Muli movie, from nowhere going all from the rural area to the city of Nairobi, hoping to get a job that I could support myself because the first thing is you have food, you have a, you know, a place to sleep, and that's how it was. And then I was in Nairobi, and they're asking people, well, give him help. I've come from very far, and uh, I have no money. I have got nothing, and always up I pleaded, but nothing good was coming out of that. And I decided to go walk along where the, there were big houses, and um, God led me to one house, and uh, this was exactly the plan of God, because when you trust in him and you give yourself to him, he opens the door. 
I knocked the door for the a family, Indian, Indian, the family. I think they were gone, gone, Indian. And then this lady came and opened, and then she asked me, what is that you want? And then I explained, I never ate food for a long time. And I was feeling so hungry. I needed also accommodation and a place to sleep. And then God spoke to this woman. She became like angel. Wow. I really, I cannot say that I could not believe. Because I knocked the door. And until she opened the door. And then she gave me some job to do. Cutting grass, cleaning the house. And also she told me how to do ironing. To, to do ironing. And I, I also did um, uh, washing dishes, all these things. And out of that, she was so impressed. God really touched her. She said, this young man has got a bright future to her husband, who was a CEO of a big company with the farms, coffee, other crops like pineapples, a lot. It was a British company. And therefore, she spoke to her husband, and the husband gave me a job. And he took me with this car all the way, far away in the rural area where they had big plantation. And then I was employed as a clerk, clerk, collecting names in the field. That was my first job. And I went on. God was with me. He opened the way again. I was promoted. I became a supervisor. It continued. I became. I, I became um, the assistant manager there. Wow, it it was like a dream. Even today, when I sit down and I think about the past, because I've never forgotten my my past. It's really, it's really, it's really a blessing from the Lord, and therefore. After that, I saw a very beautiful young lady. Because I... <laughs> yeah. And uh, this lady was not employed by the company, but our mother was a laborer. She used to work in that farm. And that young lady, uh, she was 16 years while well, I was 19 years. And then we, I asked her a question and uh, why she came. And, um, she explained and then I felt God leading me to, to her. I loved her. There were so many, but only that from the very poor mother because the mother was also, she had, they had no father. They had only the mother. They were really critically very, very poor. Anyway, we, we got married after two years later, and then things started on. Uh, we are, this time, 53 years married. 53. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This lady, she's an iron, iron lady. She's... She's really great. Uh, Esther, her name is Esther. So very kind. She never also went to school, just like myself. And uh, she speaks very good English. She can write. She can do a lot. And in fact, to care for uh, our children and the extended big family. So she was left behind, but another time she would come because she could not get a, a visa from the American embassy in Nairobi. Otherwise, I would have been with her here. I want to say thank you so much to 
uh, our senior pastor here and other mission pastors, the elders, for having really invited me to come to share what God can do, no man can do. Never. My testimony, it goes and goes and goes. There are books, Father to the Fatherless. There is another book called My Faith, uh, My Journey of Faith. And another one, and another one, about six. And most of these has been translated to international um, languages, such as Germany, and so forth. And therefore, I would also like to ask you to read uh, those books, Father to the Fatherless, you can get it through Amazon or uh, through, yeah, online, I don't know, but you can get, <laughs> you can get the, the books. Once you get the book, you read and you feel empowered. My presence here, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you that it is possible. Because even the Bible says that all things are possible in Christ Jesus. So when we trust in Jesus Christ, he will do great things for his honor and his glory. Whatever you have seen here, it could not happen if the Lord was not there. And therefore, mine is just, he, he uses me just like a, a, a pen, pen just to, you know, to, to write. The Lord is holding me and writing, writing. That was God has been doing. Me, I own nothing. And uh, I own no glory, no honor, because the honors belong to our Father in heaven. Amen. 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 And therefore, um, I've, I've had so a lot, a lot of things to, 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 to uh, I've been able to see and uh, praying for the people and uh, evangelizing. Like now, I came from Atlanta uh, today, just only to come to see you. And then after this, I'll be also moving to Michigan and I'll be able to share again. But you know, for the last 10, 11 days, I've been also in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and many other places for 10 days since I came uh, from Kenya. And I've seen God really in the face of the people. I've seen God at work because he does miracles even today. Whatever we do, in the name of the Lord, by faith, he will, he will, he will do great things. Over 26,000, over 26,000 young people who were hopeless, like me those days, all of them, they have gone through the program, they are married, they have their own families, and uh, also we have uh, 6,800 uh, 6, now, we care, within 11 campus, two in Tanzania, and nine campuses in Kenya. This is the work of the Lord. Amen. 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 And then, the, what you have seen also is that the sustainability model, being able to do something that we don't wait for uh, donations and so forth, but what is that we, Africa, we can do 
that also will show the whole world that we can. In God, we get the wisdom. And if then you don't understand wisdom, wisdom is supreme. Wisdom, it is of, uh, supersede the knowledge and the skills and everything that you may have. It is up here. And that comes from the Lord, our God. It's, it, it is that today, this evening, I give honor and glory to him, our Father, who gives, uh, who also takes. We also have uh, young people who are in the United States of America, about four. One is studying uh, medicine after having gotten uh, the first degree, the master's also in Africa, and then she came to Mayo uh, University. And that uh, a girl whom I met when she was only three years. And out of three years, we have been able she has been able to go all through the program. Why? We have kindergarten school. We have a primary school. We have secondary school up to grade 12. And you know, education, knowledge is power. And therefore, when you take that, those young people from extreme, extreme poverty, that they are get addicted to drugs and, uh, you know, alcoholism, prostitution, everything, all this. And even those opens, little kids, give them food. That's number one. When we bring them from the street, always we end up. We give them food, we give them clothing, we give them accommodation, we give them education, education in terms of vocational training, college where we also have Moli College. We train young people on various uh, trades, uh, such as agriculture, finance and administration, entrepreneurship and the business, uh, training young people to become teachers in for primary school, secondary school, and all this. Why? It is because you get something poor. You don't need to need to give handout. Handout will never help, but completely all ministry to ensure that this woman, this man, he is going to excel by being able to do some work for him, his family, and also the, the community and the country as well. I will not continue on, on that line, but I would like to now to come. Uh, one of the things that I also see from the Lord, and uh, always which amazes me, it's just a word from Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. Because of the Lord's uh, great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fail. They are new every, every morning. How great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord, our God. It is really when I look at this and uh, remember where I came from, I always say, wow. God, you are great. You are precious. You are really good. And uh, his faithfulness never ceases. Always it is there. And uh, also in Isaiah chapter 41, also verse 10, there is also a good verse. So do not fear. The men of you, even me, we, we get fear when we don't stand firm with the Lord. Because the God says, for I am your God. I will help you. I will um, uh, push you well. And uh, 
you will never be the same. And that is the Lord who will say so. So, do not fear. And tonight, I want to encourage you that you should not fear. Be in prayer, because prayer is paramount. Have faith in God. Don't retreat or don't um, go back. Look forward. And once you look forward and say, yes, Lord, there I am. Use me. All of you, you can make the whole world. You can conquer the whole world. You people here, you brothers and sisters, that the power of Jesus Christ is no joke. I've seen it, and the next time in the future when I, when I come with my wife, I will really give a message. And that message will be for all of us. I just want also to conclude by saying that um, be praying for us as you have been praying. I know you have been praying as a church. I've been here before. And uh, today also I came with the two people who are my brothers in Christ from Atlanta where we have our office. And uh, would you mind just to stand, please? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. And the, 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 the person I want to, 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 to remember him is the director of the MCL here in USA. And thank you so much for your good work you do. I've met also some other friends here. We have never met over the last six years, but I saw them. And um, yes, James, I've seen James and uh, Kayo also. Can you lift your hand, wherever you are? Okay, yeah. From Tusa, from Tusa, they flew from Tusa. They heard that I'm coming and I've seen them. And uh, also, I want to thank you again for coming. And then we have also uh, Brother Paul, in, in the name of the Lord. Paul and his wife, Amy. Will you stand? This, this couple, I don't want to say more, but uh, God changed Paul completely and he accepted Jesus Christ when he was distributing the Molly movie. He is the person who distributed the movie across USA. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, uh, um, Kyle also was also working so much close to him and uh, talking to churches, and that's how I got to know the church through also Kyle, and I thank God for the connection. I pray that God will really touch you, and I would like to ask, because the way is only Jesus, no other way, but to be in the Lord. And I would like to ask you kindly, if you have heard that short testimony, God can really remove you from dust, from nowhere, and you become somebody. The, what I have, really, it's from the Lord. Nothing else I have, I can really uh, be proud of. It's only the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, hey, Lord. May you lift up your hand so that uh, we pray, because I want to pray. This uh, time to pray for you. And uh, wherever, wherever you are, Please, you can lift up the, your hand to the Lord because he sees where we cannot see, we human beings. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, I can see your hand all the way behind there. I can see your face. Thank you, and up there, thank you. Thank you, you can put your hand down. Thank you. Oh, 
May the name of the Lord be praised. And uh, if this is your first time to be in this church, please I ask you kindly to give your name uh, because we have church elders and the pastors here and they will be able to continue to make a follow-up. Being in the house of the Lord, there is nothing better than that one. I found peace. There is peace. There is liberty. There is freedom. Yes, there is hope in Christ Jesus. There is the healing because he is the provider. And therefore, may you stand, those all who have really raised your hand, I want now to pray now. It's time to pray. Please stand up, stand up, stand up for Jesus. It is not about anybody else, but Jesus Christ, the one who left the kingdom in heaven and came down because of each one of us. We were lost. We have nothing. And even now we witness and we hear tragedy in Israel. People who have died and are innocent children. God knows you. God knows me. God is our friend. He is our king. God is our provider. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we lift our hands to you because you are the holy, holy God. You are the father of, our, of your son, Jesus Christ. You together and the Holy Spirit, you move together and because when you are up there, you look at us and you forgive us our trespasses. Not that we are clean, but only when we say, yes, Lord. And I pray for those who have lifted their hands and those who have received you as Lord and Savior. I pray, oh God, that you will touch them. And some of the people here, they may have, and they have some little problem financially. Some of them, some, they have a sick one or friend who is sick somewhere. Some of them, they have a very poor families somewhere who need help. Some of them, they are not sure how to follow you. I pray honestly, oh God, God of all creation, God who made us, and the God who sent his own begotten son to die for us. And I want to pray, Jesus Christ, that those who are sick spiritually, who among of those who are here, I bless them in the name of the Lord. And I pray, Lord Jesus, you may receive honor and glory. I pray for healing, Lord Jesus. You walked between Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and you went as far as Jericho. And everywhere you were healing people, even the blind. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you feel mercy on each one of those who have sick ones and those who have, oh Lord, never decided to follow you. And they have done it right now. And the angels in heaven, they are very happy. They are so happy. They sing, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are great God. Hallelujah. King of glory. We thank you for this kind of fellowship that we feel now. You are here with us. And I pray for the leadership of this church. I pray for the senior pastor. I pray for the missionary pastor and all others and elders, deacons, women, those who help others, that they may be strengthened and this will be a church of difference. And today the church is full today. 
but it will be more full than what it is now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we believe in you. King of glory, we invite you now that uh, you bless your people. Uh, bless us as we walk out and even when we we'll come back here. Lord, bless us. See us through and whatever is hard and difficult, Lord, I pray it may be simple, it will be workable, and some of the marriages that are really falling apart. I pray, I want to pray, Lord Jesus, some of those are here, and I pray that God help them to be united because we need to forgive one another. By forgiving one another, we please you because there is nothing else better than when we forgive one another. I pray for those families. I pray for their children that they may not suffer. I pray, oh Lord, for this evening. This is very special evening, oh God, that um, we will never be the same again. We pray for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell among all and each one of one of us. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be seated. Thank you. So stand next to me. You may be seated. Don't, don't move yet. Just stand. I mean, take your seat. So listen, in all the things I was doing and introducing Dr. Mully, uh, I forgot to mention um, our own offering. And this is a regular service. We take an offering. Most of it's given online. So... But then when I see these things, I say, God, as much as we need it, Lord, what's... so let's do this. Uh, those online, those here. When you leave the building, there's some baskets you can give if you want to give physical offering. Most people give online. Whatever we take in as a church today, we're going to split it, give it toward the work in Kenya. We'll keep just half of it for our own bills. All in favor, put your hands together. Say amen. So, Dr. Mully comes here very low-key, has made, asked for nothing, has not said one word. None of his people have said, we need this, we need that. But I want to be a part of that blessing. Amen? So, let me tell you how we're going to dismiss, because he wants it to be done this way. Dr. Mully, in a second, is going to come down there and stand, and his two associates who are with him have a, a supply of these books we have books. There's not unlimited amount, but there's books. And the people coming are going to be able to shake Dr. Mully's hand. I know you would like to. And uh, receive this gift of a book. Am I right, folks? Uh, the people that are here? Where are the two brothers that are with our Dr. Mully? Could they just stand up and come up here, please? Are you here? Yeah, come on up. So uh, step down here, my brother. Come on down. Dr. Charles, sit right down. Come down this way. Come down. Be careful. So, I believe I should wear that hat this Sunday when I preach. How many say amen? That's the coolest hat. Am I right? So, here's what we're going to do this. Like, uh, see, there's the books. We're going to make a line. Don't get crazy. Don't go Brooklyn on me. I want everybody, you'll start over there. They're going to make a line over there. Security is going to help you. And you can go out on the line there. And you're going to come across this away. Okay? Yeah, put it on the side there. So look, look at me. Look, you're going to walk across. You'll meet Dr. Mully. You'll shake his hand. Don't give him your life story, where you were born and all of that, how you met your wife. Just come down on the line and say hello to Dr. Mully. If you want, 
and then we're going to go right out that way. Now, those who are with the group that's going to be with Dr. Molly afterwards, we ask you to go to the Smith Street lobby, and Steve Renee and others will give you directions how to get where you're going. But uh, tonight's been a good night, has it not? Let's put our hands together. Praise the Lord. So listen, I told him this is the one place he didn't understand. They said to me, so give us a little room where the people who want to say hello to Dr. Mully could come. I said, we don't have a little room for where the people can greet him, right? We said that to you. So uh, 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 when I say amen here, no one will rush. We'll start over here if you want to. Otherwise, you can leave. The baskets are out there. Let's just pray. Father, traveling mercies for all of us. Watch over Dr. Mully and his team. Get him to Michigan. Let him be a blessing there. Get us home safely. Lord, let this be done decently and in order now so that people can encourage him, but we don't have a mass pandemonium, Lord. We don't want that. We want to dismiss in a loving, kind way. Help us to love each other now, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, go that away, go that away if you want to meet Dr. Mully. That away if you want to go out. Come on, get on that line. Walk right by through, okay? Just shake hands with Dr. Mully and move. Go ahead. No, 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 sir. Sir, 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 move, move, move. Just shake hands. Please, we'll be here till 2 in the morning. Thank you. Friends from Scotland, if you could go out that way to my fifth floor. Thank you.